Okay, so yeah, hello YouTube, what is up? I am gonna teach you guys katana. And I'm gonna make this guide, this is gonna be a guide, it's gonna be rather quick, it's gonna be no nonsense, you know? The purpose of this guide is to provide you information to maybe formulate your own way of playing her. So I'm just gonna give you guys the building blocks essentially, and then you guys are gonna be able to put something together with this, and maybe create your own style with her, using what I feel could be her best cameo. So yeah, what... Without further, ado, without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, uh, what is Katana? What is her style in this game? So in my opinion, I feel like she's probably the best defensive character in the game. Uh, if she has a life lead, she could essentially just take the match. And she has amazing movement. Her mobility is just off the charts. charts like forward dash is amazing, her dash block. Just both ways, it's amazing too. She has good air mobility as well in ways that are pretty new to her. Because remember, in the, old, uh, in, the older in the older games, she had float. In this game, she has something else. And all of those pretty much um, played her strength of being the best defensive character, in my opinion, in the game. And why you should play Katana is because I feel like she really doesn't have any losing matchups. Apart from one. We'll get into that later. And she's just so well-rounded. She has solid pokes. Solid strings, solid specials, amazing zoning, great meterless damage that I'll be going over in a bit. Usually when you're thinking of what makes a character strong, you know, cameo synergy is pretty much one of them. And the fact that her base kit just goes so well with every cameo, I feel like that speaks volumes of her potential. Now, in my opinion, the best cameo to choose for her, or the place that I want to do, is the low cameo. Now, why, why I choose the Lao cameo is simply because of everybody's favorite reason, which is the Lao hat. Now, you know, you're thinking, like, what are the purpose of the other moves, really? Like, the teleport, the combo starter, and I'll, I'll get to that, I'll get to that, don't worry. But what I want you guys to focus on is the Lao hat. See, ever since the beginning of time, for any NRS game, having a strong mid or low projectile is always a plus for any character. And the fact that she has a good mid projectile as it is with Fancy Flick, now back three. See, 8%. And you get this too. So look at look at the screen control you're doing from that. You're covering the ground with the Lao Hat. You're covering the air with this. And you can also cover the straight zone with this, like straight zone, this, the space ahead of you with back forward one. So essentially it turns her into a, a zoning machine. And obviously there's the, the hard to blockables, you know, you get this. Like, you get that. I mean, that was a bad example of it, but you basically get that. That's always an ask for you. Like, you can always jump in and do stuff. It's always there for you as well. So basically, Lao just takes what she could do and makes it significantly better, which I feel is a good approach for, you know, picking a cameo for your mains. Now, on to the nitty gritty. Let's go over her pokes. Okay, I'm, not, I'm just going to show you guys what's useful, in my opinion. This is a good poke. 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 Uh, this is a good poke, too. Her sweep. I feel like she has a really good sweep. Because of the range. And it pretty much acts like another projectile. So yeah, just to sum it up, use down one. Down four. Standing two. Standing one. This, I wouldn't recommend as much. I mean, it's okay. But I feel like this one's better, because... It jails into standing too, like her better strings. See, like it's it's such a it's such a good uh, good down poke to use, and I feel like you guys should be using it. Uh, the useful strings that I feel like you guys should be using too. It's one one, or even one one two. One one two is like a solid punish. But I'll get to this. You know, we'll we'll get to this punish later. You should use 2412. That is pretty much her bread and butter string. That is something you guys really need to get comfy doing. Like this dial up string. This dial in string, rather. Get very comfy doing that. Also, get very comfy canceling the canceling into this down back one. When you see the. When you see her turn around. Like a second time, that's when you cancel it. That's that's a, like my visual indicator for that. So when she turns around a second time, cancel it. Back one, sorry, back two is very good. 
Uh, this is a bad one. I don't find much use for it. This one's okay, I guess, for scrambles. I don't really get much reward off of it, other than good OP, okay, but I don't use it. I prefer using this, personally, like, back 2-4. It's a good string. Exceptional, actually, because it's advancing, you can do it while retreating, so... Another thing, too, guys. If your character is an advancing string with a backwards input, that is a very strong asset as well. Alright, now that you know her pokes, let's go over her specials. So, as you guys know, her best specials, probably this, back forward one. Pretty simple, you know, just the usual fireball. At full screen, you have enough time to duck, like incoming fireballs. So from this distance, I'd recommend holding down as you throw it. You like, so it auto ducks. Fancy flick? This is her mid projectile, it's aimed. So you guys get to pick the spots you make it land on, so you have like, close. Regular, far. And they all hit pretty far. I mean, they all hit at hard to jump angle, sorry, that's what I meant. Another useful special I feel personally is this. Her, um, square wave. For this very reason. Because part of her game plan involves getting out of the corner. And you'll be here a lot of the time, like backing up, they're gonna walk you down zoning. So what you want to do is jump into a range where they can anti you, or almost anti you. And then just square wave out of there. That's what you want to do. So like, so you're back to neutral, you're running away. Which I feel like is her strong suit. Well, the meat and, the, the meat and potatoes, obviously, is... Um, the combo starters. Which is the fan and lift. Which on first hit, you know, it's a combo state. Second hit, it bounces them. Now, I also want to point out too that I'm not going to be going over any of the EX moves because personally I don't feel too much of a use for them aside from this. And I'll be going over that later too. So EX Fancy Flick is what you want to use. That's probably the only EX move you'll want to use in neutral. And you'll also want to use EX Square Wave for a certain combo, like your 1-1 punish. Like that's really the only way to combo from it. Um, I wouldn't... I don't use this, personally. I don't recommend it when you're using Lao. Because it's a very risky, uh... It's a very risky thing to do. It's also an armored wake up. But, you know, I'll go over this later as well as I promise. As I promised. That, um, you don't want to be doing armored wake ups with her. Because there's a very important reason for her to always have meter. And I couldn't stress that enough. Alright, let's go into the, into the fun part. Let's go to the combos. So her basic combo theory is always remember starter into fan lift. Try to end in this string. One one two. Air one one two. So it doesn't matter what way you start your combo. Always try to end, like even just a simple two into that. Always try to end into one one two, and I'll show you why in a bit. Notice the distance. Hey. Okay. You have to drop a low hat as well. You have to drop a low hat, make them deal with it on wake up. But that's always your goal to do 1 1 2 so you can drop a low hat. Just remember that. Like the, the basic combo theory is starter into fan lift in the mid screen into 1 1 2. So I'm gonna go over some basic punishes. This is your 7 trade punish. An ass. Now, that's actually a lot harder than it looks, because this is an auto time. You actually have to dash a certain tempo, but once you get it down, it, it gets easier. So get very familiar with this. Like this is the only time you'll be spending meter on a combo in neutral, at least, or from a punish. This is your uh, meterless mid conversion. 315, pretty good damage. Another round from that, the more optimized one would be like this. If I could get it down. I'll get it down, I'll get it down. 
There you go, 32. Which is better. You know, it's always better to get more damage. Now, um, from your 9 frame punish... See, that's your mid. You, you use your mid to whip punish. Okay, but from your 9 frame punish... You'll want to do this. Whoops. This is the basic one. That's the more basic route to do, but the more optimized one looks like this. This is tricky. So you guys gotta bear with me. That one, that's the more optimized route. See, 34%. And all I did was just dash a little bit, go for a second bounce, and then jump 1-1-2. One, one, that's the one you'll want to aim for as much as possible, but if you can't, you know, if you're still trying to get used to the character, this is fine. This is fine, like just, you know, the fact you're doing meterless 30% is good enough for this character. Because you have to factor into, you'll be zoning a lot. Combos aren't going to be the focus of your play, you know, your game plan and what you want to do with this character. It's more a uh, solid neutral runaway game, you know, relentless zoning, that's what you want to do. So remedialist ant here goes like this. See, that's solid. 26% meter less. That's solid. Now the way that works is if you anti air with standing 2, which, by the way, I feel is one of the best buttons in the game for anti air Because look at it. Like, it recovers so fast and the hitbox is just so high up. 26% meter less. But you'd also do this if you want to spend... See, that gives it more or less like an additional 9%, an addition, additional 8%. Uh, so there is merit to doing that. But yeah, you'll want to focus on this. So, standing 2, micro dash, 1-1. One, one. Standing 2, micro dash, 1-1. One, one. Then, you know, do the, the regular combo theory I was suggesting earlier. One of the things I want to show you guys too, it's her combo theory which is in the corner. Uh, these are... I don't know how to explain them, they're pretty volatile. Okay, so get this. You do one fan lift to lift them up, right? One fan lift to lift them up. And then you have to aim for the toes with the 1-1. One, one. You have to aim for the toes with the 1-1. One, one. Like that. Usually if they're grounded, it's easier to aim for the toes. Like that. So if you leave them standing, launch. Aim for the toes. Do another fan lift. Four fan lift. So it's four fan lift, four fan lift. You basically get two fan lifts before they uh, they land on the ground, which is really good damage. That's extremely high meterless damage. 40%, you guys saw that, right? A safer route that I would do would be something like this. Like if you don't feel con confident doing that, Do this. This is a, the safer route. It's been awesome to have done this, hold on. Like, this is... I'd say one of the safer ways to get this combo. Just do another fan left on the ground. And then you end in a 1-1 one, one fan lift. Now one of the things too I recommend, like what you do after the fan lift. Oh wait, here's another route before I go get into that. Another safe route, you jump, hit them with a, with a jumping two. Very important, hit them with a jumping two. Standing four. Jumping two, standing four. One, one. That's like one of the safer routes, I would say. So jumping two, standing four, into that, solid damage. Across the board, what I would say after that last fan lift hits, this is what you want to do, okay? So let's say you got them. 
you want to like back up a little, like dash dance a little, because they're probably going to wake up with something, so you don't want to overcommit to normal. That's why I usually back up and stay around this range. Sometimes I'd leave a fan, uh, I'd leave a fan, I'd leave a low hat down, and then get the jump in. Get another combo down, jump. Like, it's very rinse and repeat. That's, that's essentially what you want to do. Because you're not going to be opening them up a lot, because it's all mids and stuff, and they're probably going to be blogging, so... You'll want to open them up like this, you know, with the low hat, get the jump in, boom, 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 boom. But yeah, that's usually the aftermath of what you'd want to go for after the final uh, final fan lift. Just hover around this range, you know, back up, back up. It's not a bad idea to back up when you're Katana. Like, even if even if you're in the advantage, just back up. You could even go full screen if you want to. Just keep them in the corner. Because the thing is, even if you're full screen, you will have the advantage. You keep them in the corner better than half the cast. Better than all the gas, really. So you gotta utilize that particular strength that you have. All right, let's put everything together. So the combos, the anti-airs, the strings, and whatnot. How do you play neutral with it? So you'll want to be zoning for the most part. This is round start range. Usually, what I do is back up, throw a fan, maybe. Um, this I feel from a certain range, it's very hard to react to. So you could treat it like a, like an extended like an extended jab. Like, I treat it like an extended normal sometimes, especially when I'm up against Johnny. Um, what I do to take my turn back, or what I feel like you could also do to take your turn back from other zoners like Reiko, maybe even Shang, is to zone with the low hat first. Like, throw the low hat first to steal your turn back, because you could block after it's out. So, do that to pretty much disrupt the zoning, then throw a fan after to check them. That's what I do. And you can pretty much alternate between the two of them. But what you really want to be doing, like in the like an absolute highest level tournament play, is to be cautious with your zoning too. Because there are some characters like Sub, you know, if you trade an ice ball with Sub, he gets a free combo, but you get damage, but he gets a free combo and he's in. Which I don't think any of us want to see. Like when you see them approaching you from like a certain range, like around this range, you'll want to poke back with the back two. And you want to sweep as well. Like, just be very comfy backpedaling. And I know this might upset a couple of people, but this is really how I feel like this variation plays. So you'll want to play around sweeping range, back to range, with those normals. You feel like they're gonna overextend, you whip punish, you hit them with this, make it hurt. This simple one, <laughs> make it hurt. Get them full screen, and then you drop one of these. Like just uh, pretty much fortify your um, just fortify your defense. Basically, fortifying your defense. Defense is the be is the absolute best offense with this character. What are you gonna do? They're blocking your they're blocking your mid, so you can't really open them up that way. She has no 50/50s, so it's strike and throw, strike or throw for her. So what I feel like you should do is grab them, throw them out, throw them out, put one of these down. Make them walk you down, make them so frustrated. Because the more mistakes they make, the better it is for Katana. She excels at making the opponents make mistakes and punishing punishing them severely for their mistakes. In the mid-screen though, it's free it's open season really. Like if you feel like you want to throw them, you can throw them either way, either direction, you know, it's fine. You get the back throw, just walk back again, you get the forward throw, that's fine, better zoning, you know. It's a better distance. The important thing in a neutral game that I feel like I want to cover, or haven't covered yet rather, is what exactly should you do after 1-1-2. So when you get them to this distance, 1-1-2 distance, they're on recovery, you put this down, drop the wind bomb. If you feel like they're blocking, if you feel like they're blocking, like in this distance, you drop the wind bomb. You drop the wind bomb. Very important thing to know, like if they're just holding down and blocking because there's no way they're gonna jump into that right that's like what you want that's what you want them to do but there's no way they're gonna jump into that they're afraid you condition them so you drop the wind bomb and let's say it hits it pops up for full combo and what you're looking for is when he pops up like that like just as i showed you that's when you buffer back to 
See, back two. Basically on their way up, that's when you buffer back two. But even in full screen, you gotta you gotta conversion basically if they um foolishly walk into this. It's a full screen check, really. They can't be they can't be reckless when this is out. This is a very important thing to understand with her. So just remember guys, after the 112, drop a low hat, put this up. If you feel like they're blocking, if they're gonna be jumping, you throw one of these up. That is what you guys do after your combos. And the reason for that, this is the fun part. Okay, this is a special section in the tutorial I'm gonna call Geometric Zoning. And this is why. This is very hard to recreate, by the way, so please bear with me. She's the only character in the game that can do something like this. See, she's the only character in the game that can do something like that with the low hat. So just just picture that for a moment. Like just just think about it, guys. Let it let it permeate. You know, just admire the fact that. You get three projectiles and a combo out of it. You could even run up. I don't think I'm there yet. We can try, but I don't think I've got that down yet. But you should be able to make it work. You should actually be able to get a full combo punish. So this is basically like the arc that she covers. But if you want to go for the meterless route, this is it. There you go. That's that's completely meterless. 18% meterless. Borderline resourceless anyway, because Lohat comes back super duper fast. But yeah, I feel like you guys are gonna do way better than I am with that, because admittedly, like, even though I've been playing this character for quite a bit. I can't seem to get that down yet, and I'm still working on it. But yeah, I entrust that knowledge onto you guys. So for this section, I'm gonna show you guys and let you guys know what I do when I play Katana in Tourney. So, so far I've played her in two tourneys, one offline and one online event. And I guess it's given me enough time to adapt to an online and offline setting and figure out what I could do to succeed with her in both. And I feel like your game plan really it's to you guys are gonna hate this you have to run the timer down as much as possible basically if you get one combo in one combo in no matter how sloppy it is you get very comfy just back dashing you know create the ultimate bullet hell for them to walk through basically play as defensive as you can don't scramble. Never scramble with Katana. Because these pokes, they get stuffed. Now, even this could get stuffed. I've lost I've lost against Kenshi a couple of times with this poke. Even though I think it's really good. I feel like she's just not built to scramble, really. You don't want to scramble in high stake match high stakes matches. You need to play in this range. This is the range I feel like she excels in, because you catch them with the sweep and then they jump in on you. They jump in on you, you got this. You know, you got... You got like, proper anti-air. You got like a proper anti-air from that range. That's basically it. Stay around sweeping range. You know, just to remind you, just to put everything into like a, a summary. Stay around sweeping range, play the defensive, just try to open them up once and then run away for the rest of the time. So like if you open up at them up like this. So you gotta improv your combos too. Like sometimes you're always gonna sometimes you are gonna get bad combos. And you have to be okay with that. Especially when you're playing katana. Like if you drop your combos midway, like let's say Like that, that happens, you just back up, you know, stick to your game plan. You always have to stick to your game plan as Katana. Flawless block to negate damage, to negate their meter build. Meter build. Um, another important thing I want to say regarding combos, and I'm putting this under the tournament section because I've literally lost sets. Lost matches and eventually sets by fucking this up and I don't want you guys to fuck up too. 
Her fatal blow. <laughs> her fatal blow is not the fastest. It's like 31, 31 frames. Or is it even 31 frames? I think it's above that. Yeah, it's 31 frames. I know my character apparently. So what you always have to remember when you're doing this, this particular like, when you're doing a particular route with her and you want to end in fatal blow, always do it after this. After the fan lift, you shoot for the fatal blow. That's always gonna hit. Cause even a slight delay, like that. Right. Then that's still gonna connect. No, that's not. See, like even a slight delay, it's not gonna work anymore, guys. Or if you try to connect it after the fan lift, that like you think this is gonna work? not. It's not. It's really not. So you always just have to make sure every time you're connecting Fatal Blow, you do it from this. Like, just don't think twice. And then the most important thing that I really want to show you guys, because this may save a Katana player's life, it will save a Katana player's life, is this. When you're in the corner, you have to change your route up a bit. See, that isn't always guaranteed. That is, that is pretty janky. Like, from some from some lifts. See, that is very janky. So what you want to do to keep it consistent is back dash cancel to that. And then there you get your fatal blow. So she has a 1-1 confirm at the Fatal Blow, that's a combo. That doesn't combo, just so you guys know. Like, a couple of restraints don't really combo into Fatal Blow, so 1-1 one, one is a safe bet. So yeah, that's, I guess, something you guys gotta remember for Tierney. Because, really, that's, that's the saddest way to lose a tournament how you shouldn't play katana, how you don't want to play katana, don't do this. Don't do this. Like, don't, don't do, you know, don't overextend and like jump like an idiot or something. Do not, don't, don't go, you know, like crazy with her. She's not a crazy character. And don't go spending meter more than you have to really. Like you have to be very economical with this character. So yeah, just, you know, stay away from um, these kinds of gimmicks. The reason these are gimmicks, or I don't even. The reason why people do these, oh, I don't want to say like they're gimmicks exactly, is because the fans stay even if you get it. So they want to trade and get a combo after, which I really advise against. You know, playing clean will always be better than, I guess, relying on setups like that. So just try to remember that, guys. Don't spend more meter than you have to. That is very important as Katana. Another thing that you guys should not do. And this is very specific to this variation. Is to <laughs> do not do this. Don't don't you know use the other Lao assists. And I'm gonna show you just why. Okay, pay attention to Lao's gauge, the cooldown gauge. Okay, when I use the low hat, fully charged. Look how fast it comes back. It's so fast, right? Now let's do this. Okay. Do you guys see how slow that is? And then you throw a Lao Hat. You can only throw you can only throw one more Lao Hat. And bas basically you lose Lao Hat for the rest of the round. So you don't want to be doing this even. See like the other Lao moves just take away from Lao Hat. Her general game plan with Lao is to pretty much cover all parts of the screen. You know, you have a you have something running along the low area. You get the mid and flick right there, the high. Because without the low hat, they can duck your zoning, which isn't bad. That's not bad, guys. It's not bad because even if they're ducking, you still get to charge meter. You, you get meter, and meter is just such a good resource for her. 
so just think about it this way. When you're running away, throwing your projectiles, you're making them work to go get in on you, but at the same time, you're also building your resources so you can fight them better and defend yourself better. So that's, that's a brief summary of what you should do. Ask it on allow. So yeah, just throw the low hat, make them respect your projectiles. Use the low hat to go for 50-50s. You know, go for 50-50s. She has some good ones. All right, two things I want to dabble on regarding her weakness. Um, it's the big thing that ev that everyone brings up whenever it's Katana, and they say the Ice Armor is a big challenge for her to navigate. I agree, but I've gotten advice on how to deal with this better, and I've been dealing with it this way in tournaments and even online. Hey, so what you guys want to be doing with the sub armor is simply flawless blocking. Because by flawless blocking, you pretty much negate what they could achieve or any form of advantage of advantage they have with the sub armor. Like take note, it takes three flawless blocks, or three blocks in general, to just get rid of the sub armor. But yeah, that's generally how you'd want to deal with the sub armor, and that goes for any character in particular, you know, because when they pick the sub armor, they don't really gain anything. I mean, if it's if it's like a high projectile, you can always just duck it. If it's a mid projectile, you can either you could flawless block it. If it's a low, you can jump it. You know, just bottom line is, if they pick the sub armor against you, just try your best to not deviate much from the runaway game that Katana does so well. And just get rid of the sub armor by blocking, by evading projectiles. You could try to hit sub zero. I don't recommend it. I do do it sometimes, but I really don't recommend that. That's me playing like an idiot. You don't have to play like me. You have to play. You could play better. But yeah, that's my suggestion for navigating that. Uh, another weakness I feel for her is that. She kind of loses up close sometimes. Like she gets absolutely destroyed in this raid. Not absolutely destroyed. Now she struggles a bit. Um, in this range, in the corner, like in this range in the corner, like a range where she can't jump out, can be a bit of a challenge. So you have to like really, really try your best to escape. Like if they're this close, or you could throw them, you know? Be bold and throw them. That's what I would suggest too. But I don't know, when it comes to pokes, hers aren't really meant for mounting an offense, they're more for mounting a defense really, so that's why I feel like this distance up close to the wall, it's not really the best place for her to be. And her worst matchup is Johnny. Surprise, surprise. But then again, I don't really consider it that bad you know all things considered that Johnny is everybody's worst matchup so it's not really a big thing you um, you'll really have to play at a very uncomfortable range because what Johnny can do is get in like that like that's eight frames of that you just have to deal with and just go such a see like it just counters your projectiles from full screen even Even like, see, it's just such a potent reversal, potent armor move. She she gets in for free, really. But he has to spend one bar to use it, obviously, which I feel works to your advantage on paper. Because you get to combo him, he can't break her, and you could send him full screen again. But then again, you'll have to open up Johnny, and it's very hard to open up a good Johnny player. So really, it's it's a bit of a tough matchup. He just. She just really struggles in this matchup sometimes. It's not unwinnable, it's just significantly... It's just noticeably harder than some of the other matchups because I don't feel like she really has a losing matchup among the cast aside from Johnny. So what I personally do in this matchup is... I throw fans from this distance. Like, I throw fans really close to his face. Like, the range that 
The range that he could do that? No, no, no. The range he could do this? Like that range. The range that he, he's gonna try to do forward one. I just like cover around this area. You know, just dash dance a bit. And then throw fans. I, that's all I could say is um, what you guys should be doing in this matchup. Just use your fans as an extended jab. Stay in that range. Make them whiff. Just don't scramble. Basically, don't scramble. Don't get comboed. That's it. I've put everything together. Uh, yeah. Katana is a runaway character. Player defensively, you'll do really well. Manage your meter. I cannot stress that enough. You know, just remember that this is a character that is very... That gets so much off of using no resources whatsoever. So you need to utilize that to play her to her max potential. Uh, always make sure that you have two stocks of EX at the bare minimum. You know, just an extra stock to get that 1-1 one, one punish. So it won't be so hard for you to build a full bar to break her if they get you in a combo. Um, another reminder is always, always try to escape corners like this. Square wave, that's the use of that move. It's not to attack your opponent, it's to scoot over them. To just, you know, <laughs> taste the rainbow over them. Uh, get comfy zoning your opponents with the fans. Best tip I could give you. Learn her combo theories. You know, you guys have it in this video. Just remember fan lift into 1-1-2. One, one, all you need. Uh, yeah, I guess that's generally about it. So yeah, that's pretty much how you play Katana, or how I approach Katana. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. And if you feel like you want more guides from me like this, uh, let me know. I'll try to make some for the other characters I play, or characters I play down the line. I mean, I'm always down to help you guys improve, or show you guys what we could do, or what you could do with certain characters, you know. I just want to make sure we're all uh, enjoying the game and enjoying our characters. And yeah, if you want to see more, feel free to drop that sub. I would appreciate it. And hopefully I see you here on YouTube or if you guys see me on Twitch, do drop me that follow, guys. I'd appreciate you.